wonderful day not so long ago when the automobile first came to an American town. The grown-ups clustered around to gape and gawk at this elaborate, extravagant, outlandish method of locomotion. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Robert Anderson invented the first electric vehicle in 1839. Since that year, scientists have tried to improve upon the original concept, hoping that one day soon electric vehicles may break the world's addiction to fossil fuels. This technology has a long way to go. The best batteries on the market are still too heavy and take too long to charge. The range is still too limited and the vehicles are too expensive for the average person. Although some of the world's best and brightest scientists are on the case, it looks to be at least several years before the average person can afford an electric car. But increasingly, conspiracy theorists disagree. In fact, many people believe the technology we need has already been invented and that companies are purposely suppressing the electric car, using their political influence to keep the cars off today's market. Why? Here's where it gets crazy. This isn't the first time car companies have been accused of killing electric vehicles. In 1974, Bradford Snell of the U.S. Senate Antitrust Subcommittee alleged that General Motors conspired to kill electric trolley systems in 45 cities across the United States. Snell believed that GM was buying electric trolley companies in order to dismantle them, forcing cities and individuals to buy GM buses. Ultimately, GM was not convicted of monopolizing the trolley system, but their reputation never recovered. Fast forward a few decades to the modern age, where we still don't have an affordable electric car. According to analysts like Doug Kortoff, auto manufacturers have been dragging their feet for decades. In the film Who Killed the Electric Car? Filmmaker Chris Payne alleges that General Motors purposely scrapped the Saturn EV1, an electric car, despite high customer demand. Representatives of General Motors claimed that there wasn't any money in the vehicle and that it was impossible to justify continued production. This makes sense. Car companies have to make money to stay in business. But in other ways, it seems counterintuitive. After all, being on the forefront of a new industry could create billions in profit. Why would car companies purposely suppress innovation? Many conspiracists believe the explanation is found in the boardrooms of large oil companies. After all, these companies depend on petroleum-powered vehicles for a large portion of their annual revenue. Conspiracy theorists believe that oil companies have worked hand in hand with auto manufacturers, purchasing the rights to effective batteries and keeping them off the market. This seems possible, but it is far from conclusive. Car makers and consumer advocates can't even agree whether consumers want an electric car, but certain facts are indisputable. The current electric car technology is more expensive than the traditional gas-powered car. To some, this simply means that science hasn't cracked the design problems yet. To others, however, it means that oil companies and auto manufacturers have taken the technology of the future and kept it locked away. Is this possible? Could multinational oil companies have partnered with auto manufacturers to ensure short-term profits while ignoring long-term consequences? Is there, hidden away in some laboratory or archive, something they don't want you to know? The automobile, which at first had been only for the wealthy, was being priced within the reach of most American families. There still were mechanical headaches, but the auto was here to stay. 